So APUs, what can I say? I have a bit of a soft spot for them. Love them or hate them, they're still pretty cool in my opinion. From FM2 based A series chips like the A10 7650K to the latest Ryzen 5700G, they've offered gamers a cheap and recently even cheaper way to get into PC gaming rather than going down the traditional route of adding a graphics card. So that's where this comes into play, the Ryzen 3200G. What can it still do three years on? I hope you enjoy the video. My name's Andy and this is Andy's Tech. Now my friend asked me a few weeks back if I could put together a cheap little PC for his eight year old son. Okay, I said, sure, I've got just the ticket and this is what I came up with. Okay, yes, it's no powerhouse, but I wanted something he could add to and upgrade as he went along, but also look cool. And being on the AM4 platform, this fits the ticket perfectly. We have an A320 motherboard, 16GB of 3200MHz DDR4 RAM, a 500GB M.2 SSD, a 450W 80 plus XFX PSU I had lying around I may add, and all this bundled up in a GameMax icon case. Not too shabby. Okay, so the 3200G, yes. I had a rough idea of what the performance would be and I usually just jump onto YouTube to find a current review to validate this, but haha, <laughs> no, alas, I could not actually find one. What? But so much promise three years ago, everyone was shouting about the little 3200G. Cash cow YouTubers were lining up, praising its many talents. Surely someone has come back to take a look at it. No. All I could find is benchmarking videos, you know the ones where they flash through the specs bish bash bosh wham bam and gone through about 10 games before the kettles boiled? No thanks. So we're going to do it properly, well try to, hopefully. The 3200G is a 4 core, 4 thread, 65 watt APU released by AMD in 2019 for the AM4 platform. It offered the perfect sub £100 package for anyone looking for a super cheap gaming solution for a budget gaming PC. This is because of the onboard Vega 8 graphics providing a good entry level experience in all the popular esports titles that were around at the time. It's slightly upgraded from the OG 2200G with a slightly higher clock speed and boosting all the way up to 4GHz. The graphics was also upped to 1250MHz from 1100MHz. These chips are overclockable on both the CPU and GPU, but overclocking can vary so much from chip to chip and user to user, so we'll be running stock today. Well, that said, we couldn't actually overclock even if we wanted to, as the system is based around an A320 motherboard. It's also worth noting that the RAM is 3200MHz CL14 running in dual channel. Please don't run APUs folks with single channel RAM, you will suffer. Latency is better than speed, so a CL14 3200MHz kit will run a lot better than a CL16 3200MHz kit. But I think that's enough talk from me, so let's test some games. And up first we have CSGO. At 1080p low, with advanced 3D audio turned off, we returned a respectable 136 FPS average with 1% lows of 71 and 0.1% lows of 17. The figures were taken over three online matches and averaged, with the footage coming from a bot match. Now CSGO isn't as budget friendly as it used to be, but certainly as a casual experience it was more than playable at these settings. You could improve things by dropping the resolution to 900 or 720p, but then again you're not really going to be lining up to buy a 3200G to play CSGO competitively. So a pass in my book. 
Next up we have Dota 2, another game on the Steam Top 5 free to play list, 1080p low and no trouble here. 122 FPS average with 66 and 48 in the percentiles. I'm not a Dota 2 player and I find the best way to benchmark this game is to watch an online match with people you know that actually know what they're doing. You could easily get away with turning the settings up a little bit here as well, but the preference is yours. Yes, Stutter Knight, aka Fortnite, and it didn't disappoint. Performance mode at 1080p with far view distance. The first few rounds we were down to 9 in the 0.1% lows, but after a few matches the game settled down a bit, with an average of 96 and 49.6 and 14.3 respectively. It's such a shame Fortnite is plagued these days. I remember you could run this game half decently on an old i3 second gen, but alas, things have changed. The game is getting more demanding, but performance mode is still a blessing for lower end hardware, and most people with a setup like this will either be using a 60 or 75 hertz monitor, and I would recommend capping the FPS or turning V-Sync on to smooth things out. It was still a fun experience, and I'm honestly impressed with this little chip so far. One of Rockstar's finest next, and getting on a bit now, but a true classic and a game any self-respecting budget gaming PC should be able to run. 1080p normal settings with the slider set to half to make the game look a little more interesting. It's not much fun driving around an empty city and seeing the same car all day, but no problems here with the figures coming in at 60, 39 and 36 FPS. Minecraft. Now considering I built this system for the user to play Minecraft, it's probably best that we test it. Java 1.19 with Optifine installed, just at the game's default setting with 12 chunks render distance. I started a new game and played for an hour's gameplay, built a cave, killed some sheep. There was a few stutters when loading in a load of new chunks, but generally it was a lovely experience with 164 FPS average, 1% lows of 60 and 0.1% lows of 20. You could run some shaders on this as well with no problem, and I think you'll be very happy. Last up, and I wanted to test something a little more demanding, Apex Legends. Yes, the game I suck at, we all know by now. Well, FPS games in general, as I'm left-handed and just can't get competitive using my other hand. We had to drop the resolution to 720p here at low settings. It does start to look a little grainy though like this, but honestly I was pleasantly surprised here as well. We had a 73 FPS average with 48 and 38. Personally I think this is a wicked effort from the little 3200G. Apex isn't the most easy to run esports title out there, and if, like me, you're just playing for fun, you would have no trouble here at all. Also, if you had a B450 motherboard, you can overclock the iGPU and CPU. You'll see around a 15% increase then as well in frames, and when you're running at the lower end of things, 70 over 60 is a big difference, and it will also help smooth out those percentile figures. Now that brings us to the end of the video. Should we all go out and buy a Ryzen 3200G? <laughs> well, clearly not. But is it still an okay option if you're on a super tight budget and want to be on a newer platform? Yes, I would say so. It has its limitations obviously, you won't be able to go and play Cyberpunk at max settings at 1080p, but it will play all the latest esports titles with at least 60 FPS. And that's quite impressive in my book for an APU I spent £50 on. The AM4 platform just has endless upgrade options as well. And it's really hard not to recommend this. So thank you for watching the video. I'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comments. Please leave a like as well if you've made it this far in the video. I'd really appreciate it. Maybe consider joining our Discord server if that's your thing. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. God bless, take care and hopefully see you in the next one.